Hello, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions, and we're here to talk about loading the silicone pad specifically for Red Drive 77. When you got your press and it comes out of your box, you're gonna loosen your bolts on the top and on the back. Remove your top beam, placing it either on its side or on a cloth to protect the platen. Loosen your bolts for your clamps. Now with both your clamps open, take your silicone pad, placing it in the center of the press, trying to line it both front and back. Now open your belt clamps and grab a long section of belt. It's long enough to stretch the whole length of the press. Load it inside the template. And swing your clamps closed. Now take your pressure plate and align it over the belt. Now that everything is completely aligned, we can now safely lock our silicone template into the press. We'll take our clamps, slide them into place, lock them down. Now with this locked into place, our silicone template will not move. We can open our clamps, take our belt and our pressure plate out, and we're ready to load in a belt. If you have any additional questions, you can go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions, and we're here to talk about reordering the consumable parts for your Red Drive 77 splicing system. So let's say you've shown up to open your press, and for whatever reason, there are missing parts or there are items that need to be reordered. You open up your press, and you remove your beams, you'll find some items inside that may show signs of wear. One being the silicone cloth. This can be reordered in a 30 foot roll from motion.com. And there are also the silicone template inside has a reorder number that you can go to motion.com and reorder. These items are consumable products. They will wear and or could be damaged. So we do suggest having a spare on hand. If you have any additional questions, please go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions, and we're here to talk about cutting Red Drive 77 inside of our Flexco NDX 114 cutter. When you get your cutter ready and loaded onto your conveyor, and you're prepared to start cutting your ends, you're going to take the loose end of your belt and you're going to load it top side up. So you take your belt end and you're going to align the V-guide with the top of your, your cutter. I'm not firmly clamping this down at this point. I'm aligning it on this end. And then I'm going to take the other clamp and I'm going to align it with my V-guide. And then going to clamp it down firmly and then firmly on the other side, ensuring that I have a nice flat surface on my belt. And then going to release the pin on the back so that I can turn the handle start the cutting process. Nice and easy cut to ensure I get a nice, clean cutting finish. And as soon as I'm done cutting, I can feel that there is no longer a belt. I stop my blade, lock my handle, release my clamps, and remove the belt. And the ends of the fingers are cleanly prepared. And then I'm going to take 
the next section of our belt. And again, I'm going to load it in from the other side, top side up, sliding it in underneath, aligning it with the clamp. Not fully clamping it down, bringing down the other clamp, lining it with the notch on the clamp, making sure that it's nice and flat, lock in the first one, pulling it and making sure it's nice and flat with the second one. Now I can release my clamp. Again, feeling that there's no longer any resistance from the belt, I know that I'm done cutting. Lock my handle, release my belt, and my ends are prepared. So now you have both ends of the splice nice and cleanly prepared to load into your press. If you have any additional questions, you can go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions, and we're here to talk about the tips and tricks for loading your Red Drive 77 belt into your Flexco Aero 325 press. Now that you have the fingers of your belt already prepared, you're going to align the end of the fingers directly in the center or as close to center of your press as possible. And you press that end of your belt into place and clamp. Now that this is perfectly aligned in the center and clamped in place, we grab our second belt that's already prepared and we're going to focus specifically on the center finger where the V-guide is. We're gonna focus on pushing this very center point in first. Press it up inside the position and slowly snap it into place. As it begins to snap into place, all of the other fingers will line up. Swing your clamps on and clamp it into place. Now your fingers are nice and tight, resulting in the very best splice possible. You then are going to take your silicone cloth, lay it over the center of your belt, and you're going to take your pressure plate and align it within the grooves of your clamps, your outside clamps, making sure that everything is nice and tight. Take your top beam, place it back on the press and clamp your bolts down just finger tight. Nothing too snug, nothing too tight. Take your pigtail joint and plug it into the bottom beam. Now that everything is closed up and ready to go, you can begin your cook. If you have any additional questions, you can go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions, and we're here to show you the proper loading of the press recipe and the cooking cycle for the Red Drive 77. With your press fully loaded and ready to go, making sure your power cords are connected, reach down below and power on your press. You'll notice that the press is going to ask you to confirm your power cord. So using the silver dial and, and button, you're gonna scroll down to correct and press the button. You're then going to verify that you have the correct recipe loaded on your screen, in which this one does say Red Drive 77, at which point you just hit the green button. You'll hear the air compressor come on and you'll see the pressure rising and the temperature rising. It shows you where the temperature of the platen is now and where it's going to go to. So in this instance, it's 30 degrees C, 
and it's going to 180 degrees C. So now we'll sit down and wait, and in about 18 to 22 minutes, our cycle time will be over. As you can see, our cooking cycle has ended. You can hear the fans running now on the press, and our temperature is slowly going to start to go down to cool the press. At this point, the press is at its hottest, and no matter where you put your fingers on the press, you know you can safely touch the, the body of the press without feeling like you're going to burn yourself. Very, very safe in that. At this point, we've had probably less than five minutes until the cycle is fully fresh. And with that sound, it tells us that the cycle process is complete. So when we look at the screen, the screen tells us that it took 23 minutes and 43 seconds to complete. And our press is cooled so that we can open it. So now our first step is to power the press off. And then our next process is to press the blue button to release the air pressure from the press. You can now disconnect your power cords and you can release your locking nuts. Remove your top beam and your pressure plate and your silicone pad. Unclamp your belt. And your splice is complete. If you have any additional questions, please go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions, and today we're here to talk about cutting issues regarding your NDX cutter. If you're having a challenge, the cutter itself is not cutting the whole way through your belt. What are some of your ways that you can best figure out what the issue is with your cutter? The very best step to start with is changing your nylon cutting pad. As you can see, there are deep grooves that begin to channel into the nylon cutting pad. And it is a consumable item. So we'll order a new pad, the material come in with a brand new set of fasteners in a plastic bag. To start, we wanna use our cut resistant gloves, which are provided. Grab your uh, hex head screwdriver. Take the pad out of the way. You can check your fasteners and reuse them as you like. Take your brand new nylon pad. Both sides are the same. Place it back on the surface. Line up your bolt holes. And tighten them in place. Now that I have the bolts tightened down, we're ready to cut. In many instances, this is the first step to eliminate any kind of cutting issues that you may have. For additional information or to order your consumable parts, go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Seth Stoner with MI Conveyance Solutions. And today we're here to talk about the NDX cutter that's having some cutting issues. Let's say for whatever reason you are cutting your belt and it's not cutting the whole way through. You've adjusted or replaced your nylon pad and now you're thinking it's probably time for me to replace my blades as well. You'll order a consumable replacement kit from motion.com and inside that kit you'll find a pair of cut resistant gloves, some Allen wrenches, and a replacement set of blades. Because we're working directly with the blade in this instance, we're going to make sure we put on our cut resistant gloves. You'll notice there are three Allen nuts on the very front 
of the machine, you're going to loosen those nuts and take them out. Once this is removed, you'll notice the exposed blade and some thumb screws to loosen your blade. Loosen the thumb screw and remove your blade. You'll notice that there's an edge on the inside to set the proper depth of where your blade needs to sit. Grab your new blade, slide it back inside the block, aligning the ends, tighten down your thumb screws, and replace the cutting blade back inside it. Take your bolts and reapply them to the head. At this point, now you'll have a fresh brand new cutting pad and a fresh new blade, and you can go ahead and check your cutting results. If you have any additional questions, or if you need to reorder any consumable products, please go to miconveyancesolutions.com or motion.com. Thank you very much.